Hi, welcome to day two. Um, this is the Just Flutes uh, Getting Into Whistle series, uh, five days. Yesterday, if you joined me, we looked at a slow air called Don't Low, and today um, we're going to start with a polka. Um, if you come back tomorrow, there'll be a waltz or a jig, and at the end of the week, we'll get to a reel. <coughs> If you have any questions, uh, please ask them in the comments below or feel free to send me a DM on Instagram or Facebook, just search for Philippe Barnes. Um, I'm going to be teaching by ear, so we're going to go through the tune really slowly. I'm going to show you where to put your fingers, how to do all the ornaments. If you're struggling to keep up, don't worry, you can watch this again afterwards. You can pause it and fast forward through me rambling on. Um, if you don't have a whistle yet, head over to the Just Flutes website and pick yourself up a high D whistle or a nice low D whistle, either will be fine for joining in this. This is a MK Kelpie from Just Flutes, in fact. Um, and yeah, if you're, if you're not comfortable learning by ear, the sheet music will be up on the Just Flutes website. If you go to the homepage at the moment, it's right there. Um, as well as information about rods, uh, warm-up classes which are every day at 2 p.m. for flute players um, and those are great um, helping me stay in shape anyway. So um, we're going to crack on with a polka. This is called Britches Full of Stitches. Uh, it's a lovely little tune. Polkas are kind of a dance tune in 2-4, um, particularly popular in the west coast of Ireland at Cork and Kerry. Um, and if you ever go to sessions in Brighton, which is the, my hometown, there's a lot of polkas played down there just because of the just because of the music, musicians who are around there. Um, okay, it's a nice, simple little tune. Polkas have a lot of life in them, and I'm going to show you a couple of ornaments to stick in there. So um, this is Bridges for the Stitches. I'll play it to you first. Okay, so um, we'll go through it nice and slow, um, starting with a nice roll on the G. So yesterday, if you uh, if you joined us, it was down low with a slow air, and we added a little bit of feathering. We added a few cuts in as well. Um, today, there'll be no feathering in this tune, but there'll be a few cuts, and we're also going to add our first roll. So the ornaments are one of the things which make Irish music sound the way it does, um, and a G roll. It's a cut above and a cut below, or some people call it a tap below. Um, the key difference between a roll in Irish music and a like a modern or a roll in classical music is that in classical music we got this have this lovely melodic shape around the note, and with the Irish music we're looking to make something rhythmic. We're looking to cut that note up into into chunks. So um, if we were to play. A lovely classical roll. We want to not really hear what the notes are above and below the note. So partly we're teaching our fingers new muscle memory. If you already play um, something like flute or sax or clarinet, 
Um, if you're starting completely fresh, then um, you're possibly in an easier situation. But um, the cut above, let's do that first. So we're just going from a G, which is three fingers down, to an A, and back to a G. And in fact, let's try not to think of it as moving between those two notes, but just letting a tiny bit of air out of the G. Just looking for a little kind of yelp there, a little bubble there. And you can use the middle finger instead. Makes it a bit more bubbly. Depending on your whistle, it might be too much. So just do that for a while, get used to it. Once this series is done, I'm probably going to put up a video of um, a little ornament workshop which just gives you a kind of basic exercises to practice them all over the whistle. Because I found, especially uh, teaching classical flute players the whistle, that a lot of them want to get their ornaments much crisper. And I think there's a kind of shortcut to doing that rather than just practicing the one or two that are in the tunes. It's good to kind of isolate it and practice it like we were practicing a, a study to improve our classical playing. So let's try uh, the bottom half of the roll or the second bit of the roll. We're just going to literally tap our finger on the next hole down the F sharp. So it sounds very similar to the cut above. And if you're having trouble that it's coming out more like a roll, but like a classical roll, I want you to separate them out. So think of it as da 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 So try and pull the two apart so it's not always da 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 G roll and then A B G. It's on the roll again. Move on the next phrase, nice and simple. I'm going to try and keep the ornaments to a minimum in this tune just so we can get a sense of the whole thing and just you know start to introduce a few. So we're going A, G, B, G again. Let's try and put those two phrases together, starting on the G roll. Let's do that a couple more times. as well I'm not playing with any vibrato just keeping it a nice steady stream of air there it might be quite difficult for some of you to switch off the vibrato after playing it with it all the time um, but it's gonna make a difference to the way your, your tunes sound so we're letting the fingers do the work to ornament the tune we're letting we're gonna introduce some tonguing into some of the other um, 
maybe the real, I might sh show you some triple tonguing to go in there. Great. Now, um, I've just noticed in the PDF that I put on the Just Fruits website, the next G doesn't have a roll symbol over it. Um, we're going to pop one in. So it's the same phrase again, it's the same question, but with a different answer. So. So G roll, A, B, G. Okay, and a different answer this time. So we're going A, G, and then we're going to E, but we're going to pop a little D in there before the E. So A, G, which is two, three. And then it's all fingers down for the D, but quickly up to the E. So put those two together. time. And again. Lovely stuff. So we've put those two phrases together so we've got the question and the answer. This is the third and fourth bar of the G. Now I'm also going to play this in as much of a slayer as I can. So I'm trying not to kind of tongue all the notes again or start them all the time because they're having that continuous sound um, is what we're after. Great. So let's pop that first and second phrase together now. So from the very start of the tune, we have the question, answer, question, different answer. So. Let's do that again. in the middle of that whole thing there's two G's next to each other you need to tongue that second G uh, because we're just about to go into the roll or you can um, flick with the right hand it's before you do the roll and then it's nice because you've got below above below um, but either way is good so the next phrase um, you'll be pleased to hear is the same as the first two bars. <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> so we're going to go up at the end of it to a D. <laughs> so we're going to play the D all fingers down except for this one comes off. It's a clearer note with the finger off. You can also play it with the finger down, it's a more sort of rich, dirty sounding note. Depends on the context. You might want to try just moving from B to D because you're just swapping the fingers, and when you're playing the B, you might want to steady the whistle with the right hand little finger. Or not, either way is fine. Let's pop that phrase together from the G roll. And again. 
a bit slower. One more time. Great. Now we're just going to do the last phrase of the A part. I should say most um, of these traditional tunes, whether Irish or Scottish or Cape Breton or um, Brittany, like they usually have an A part and a B part. It's usually twice around the A part, twice around the B part. Um, of course, there's tunes which have an A, B and a C part or a five part tunes. Um, this one's a nice little simple A part repeated, B part repeated. Um, I should also say if you want to go further into uh, learning whistle, then um, get in touch with me on Instagram or Facebook, uh, Philippe Barnes, and you can book a Skype lesson. Um, or you can go to Just Flutes and order my tune book, or um, I have a book about Irish music on a silver flute and some flute and piano pieces, which are kind of contemporary Celtic music for flute and piano. And uh, let's dive back into the tune, the last section. Very similar to what we did before, G A G E. Again. Lovely stuff. And then the next note is an E, so we're going to start that with our finger instead of the tongue. So we're keeping the middle finger down, just lifting the first finger. They are, and then it's two Ds. I'm actually going to tan the second D just gently. You can also just stop the air and start it again. Put those two phrases together, we're starting from a G. And again. And one more time. Lovely stuff. Okay. So I'm going to play through the whole A part now, um, join in as much as you can, um, don't worry if you haven't got all of it just yet, that's what it'll come with time. Um, here we go, starting with a G roll. Hopefully that was uh, not too bad. Um, the B part, um, in when I played you at the beginning, I was doing a couple of crams on that D. Um, might not have time to show you those today, but I'll show you the, the, the B part and we'll definitely get to crams later in the week. So, starting on a D. Okay, so there's a little ornament here. We're going to an E, and then just like we, we did at the end of the A part, we're going to just lift this finger, put it back down, 
we go back to the D. So. So D, E, ornament, D. Context. If you're in trouble with that, we can just go. So it's just it's basically D E D that we're adding in that little that little cut. Okay, and then starting from a B, we're going to go. again in a second and it happens again right now but with a different ending and that different ending is the same as what we've already played um, so from this point the rest of the material for the tune is stuff we already know so it's just knowing the structure of it how it fits together and that happens in a lot of trad tunes it's that repetition that kind of makes them um, gives them that hypnotic quality so This is like our B part uh, question, then starts the same. And then. phrase is the same as the first phrase together one more time great so let's put together that B part um, we're going to do half of it so the first four bars of it Okay, now the next 
next part. Let's do that again. tune through a couple of times now um, join you when you can um, and I might just afterwards show you a couple of extra things that you can put in it so here we go bridges full of stitches So let's have a little look at what we can add in the way of extra augmentation. The very start of the tune, just before that G, we can start by sliding up from an F sharp. So I'm just pushing this finger away and straightening it so you get a... Now, I think the shorter you keep the slide, the better it's going to sound, because if you make the slides too long, it starts to sound a bit, um, a bit much. Okay, next bar. You can pop a little grace note on that A. even think of it as going from the G to the A via a B. So and then do that again with the A there. Same thing with the A there. If you like, go from the G to the B. You can slide those two fingers up. Again, keep it as short as possible. Sometimes it's nice for stuff to just be crisp and not to be too swoopy. You can also, instead of that, when you go to the D, go B, D, bounce this middle finger. So you get D, B, lift the middle finger off, put it back on. I'll show you again. So that sounds like... coming down there, D, 
G, A, G, bounce that G. Part, there's just one thing I'd add in. I'll just show you real quickly what that is so you can start having it a go, having a go at it, and we're gonna um, come back to it again. Um, we've shown you the rolls. The crown, you lift middle finger of the right hand, then first finger of the right hand. It's a little Mexican wave for those right hand fingers. That one and that one. So have a stab at that. You might find um, with some of these ornaments that they're, they're just not sounding that crisp. And some of them, it's just, uh, it's just getting your fingers used to it, building it into the muscle memory. Some of it feels a bit like a knack, like it will be rubbish phrases and then it'll finally click and you'll be like, ah, oh, great, I can do it. Um, but all those little things are going to make a massive difference. Once you've learned them in one tune, you can apply them to any other tune that you're playing as well. So um, they're all really worthwhile to make your playing sound more traditional. Um, I'm going to leave it there for today. Thank you so much for joining me again. Um, you can go back and watch the first video if you haven't already. Um, head to the Just Flutes website if you need to buy a whistle to start with or if you want to upgrade your whistle, there's loads of great options there. You can see my past videos demonstrating them all so you can hear them. Um, please feel free to send me a message if you have any questions about uh, what whistles I play or um, which whistle you should get, uh, what other keys whistles you might, you might want to find. Um, subscribe to the Just Flutes YouTube, head over to my YouTube. I'm going to start putting a lot more stuff up there now. Um, and uh, yeah, be very happy to meet you virtually on Instagram or any of those things. Um, thanks a lot.